So, uh, good afternoon and welcome uh, to my presentation about writing and exploit in the following 30 minutes. My name is Siri Slabi and I'm a member of the LEPS team. First, let me introduce you why I'm talking about it in the first place. We are developing KGraft in the LEPS and as you already perhaps know, because Iri uh, Kosina has a, had a talk yesterday about it. Uh, it is an online Linux kernel patching framework, which we are developing, and I'm one of the developers. Actually, uh, KGraft is working somehow, and we wanted to demonstrate how it works for customers, for example. So we just told us, come up with a KGraph patchable exploit, so that we can actually uh, explain the customer. Here you can see a kernel with a bug in it, and here is an exploit which can use the hole, and now we apply the KGraph patch, and after we apply the KGraph patch, the exploit doesn't work anymore. So this is exactly what is the core of the presentation, the talk about the exploit we were using or we are using. Here is how the presentation will look like. Uh, first, I will show you uh, what bug we picked and how. Then I will describe the bug proper and I will tell you something about how to write an exploit for the bug. And there will be also a short conclusion in the end. Okay, so uh, what what bug we picked? And first, we had to uh, establish some requirements. Well, uh, to see what what uh, to look for. So when we are presenting something to a customer, we need an exploit which is working every time. So we had uh, we had we needed uh, an exploit which is 100% working. Then we needed an exploit which is working fast, so that. Uh, it can exploit the bug in seconds, for example. And also, when somebody is interesting, in, interested in a fix, uh, the fix should be simple enough to be explainable to the customer. So, uh, well, we wanted, we, we had such requirements, but where, where to find such, such a bug? Uh, maybe you know there exists uh, an exploit database at that URL. And there is over 30, sorry, there is a mouse pointer, it shouldn't have been. There is an URL and there is over 30,000 exploits in there. Not all of them are for the Linux kernel, but uh, we were able to fi find one which, uh, which meets the requirements we, has, we had. And the one was, uh, which we chose was in the Netlink code. So what was the bug we chose? First, let me note that all such several bugs uh, or vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities are numbered. Uh, they are numbered by an organization, Mitre, and all such bugs receive a CVE number. And this one was CVE 2013-1763. And we also had a bug at uh, Bugzilla at Novel.com with the number you can see on the slides. So. Where is the bug? The bug is in a message handler for a Netlink interface. A Netlink interface is an interface for communicating uh, between the kernel and user. In this spe specific case, this was for second diagnostic layer. This means that the user asks a kernel for some information and the kernel repl re replies. Because the user uh, sends some information to the kernel, and this is the handler. It should be very careful uh, what the data are because the user can be just evil and send some, some data. But if we look at the function, here it is. It takes two arguments. The first one is not interesting for us. The second one is the message. We just take the data of the message in here and only check if the data uh, can f or if the message is long enough to uh, to have the structure inside it this is every uh, this is all what the function checks for and then there is a problem because there is a global variable an array which is 41 uh, pointers long yeah there are 41 uh, entries but there are no checks for 
the family member of the structure coming from the user. So user can, uh, can just send some message, set direct family to 100, and it touches uh, the uh, it touches the array be, uh, it touches the memory behind the array because it is only 41 uh, pointers long as as you can see if it loads some data from the memory behind the memory is used several lines below there is the reference so kernel instantly jumps to that location which was loaded somewhere behind the array do you see the bug it should be clear well, yes, there was a commit after that to just add the check for the family, which is obvious. If it is uh, larger than the 41 in here, it just returns with the inval uh, error. Okay, so this is the bug. Now, how to exploit the bug? If you want uh, the bug which I will be talking about is available at that address, at my repository at the GitHub as exploit talk, and there are three basic steps. The first one is obvious. We want to reach the function where the bug is. The second one, we want to hit the actual error in the function and abuse it. And finally, when we do, when we do it, we just r r run a shell, which should be already a root shell. So let's go through the steps one by one. Reaching the function. It should be easy, because I, I told you that User can set some, uh, send some message over the netlink layer, and this is exactly what we are doing here. We have a structure with a message. There is, there is a netlink message header and diagnostic layer, uh, data for the diagnostic layer. We set up the netlink message so that it is so socket diagnostic layer, and then we create just socket for netlink sorry, for netlink and, and the layer and se send the message in here. I can show you that it really does what I am saying. I have prepared a demo in here. I have a code similar to what is in slides. No, not really. I should. How is it called? Step one. This is exactly what I have on slides. If I uh, compile it on a kernel which has the vulnerability and run it, I should be uh, I should run through the function. We obviously cannot see that, but if I enable function tracing using this code, oh, there should be no T. Okay, so now if we look of what functions are hit, there are none for the time being, but if I run the exploit now, I should see that uh, the kernel was in the function. Note that there is underscore underscore in the function name in here, but it, it is inline it in, in this function. I cannot actually trace this one exactly, but you have to trust me that the, uh, that the code in the kernel uh, went through that function. Okay, so we are in that function in the kernel. Now we would like to hit the error. We would like to touch the memory behind the array. If you remember the code which was in the kernel, there was there was the array, there was the fetch from the array, and there was the dereference. So from the user space, we here we set the netlink message, and, and the only thing what we additionally do now is that we set that to some value behind the array. So when we run it, run it, we should crash the kernel or something bad should happen. So let's try it. I will show you the code that I only added here, the initialization of the SDR family. And if I compile it and run it, the kernel just dies because it dereferenced memory at this this address. This is important to remember. I have it on another slide and I will reboot the machine so that I can continue using it. Meanwhile, I will show you it here. The address was this one. And as you can see, uh, 
it has some specific value. You can uh, read about the value in the proceedings you will receive from the conference uh, and why it is especially this, this value. I, I won't go into the details because there is not much time. Okay, so what we can do, because the kernel jumps there and tries to execute the code there, we just map some memory in there and let the, let the kernel execute our code. In this case, I am doing the mapping here and just fill, fill in the memory with C freeze because C free is returned. So if kernel jumps somewhere, somewhere to the memory, it will just return and uh, return to the user with no crashes. Do you see it? So I will log into the machine again. You can see that there is the mapping code. So that if I compile it now and run it now, there should be no more oops. Yeah. Just if you want to see that the code is still executed, I can run the tracer again. Nothing. Now that I run the exploit, the function should be there with no with no more crashes. So what do we have now is that we force the kernel to jump to our address somewhere in the middle of, of this space. And because we have their return instructions, it just returns back a continue execution with no uh, bad things to happen. And now what we can do is just to force the kernel instead of returning to do, uh, to do some uh, malicious things like giving us permissions to do anything, to be a root. How we can do it? Well, in the kernel it is easy. There are two functions which we just need to call. It is prepare a kernel credentials with a parameter and the parameter is uh, zero because we want to be a root and just then we call commit credentials and after this, if we call this under the kernel, we became root. But okay, how we can call it in the user space because we cannot link against the kernel. We cannot call it directly in our map space. Well, this is easy. Uh, we just find an address of, of the calls, uh, of the functions and call them indirectly. As you can imagine, it is an easy C code. We just assign to some variable and call it indirectly. Okay, but the problem is where to obtain the address where to get the addresses of, of the two functions. In older kernels, there existed an instruction which was able to tell the user where the kernel is in the memory. Yeah, because it could be almost everywhere it is, if it is re uh, relocatable. But today, it cannot because uh, the instructions gives us uh, the copy, unlike the, in the old kernels. So. We could use prods uh, KL sims, but well, if you try it on current kernels, only zeros are returned for every kernel for ordinary user. So we cannot use it too, but we still can use system map, but this won't work on the relocated kernels because the addresses are for the kernels loaded at specified address. But we don't mind because most of the machines are booted without relocation, so addresses found in the system map will correspond to what, what we actually want to call. So we grabbed system map for these two calls, use it at SAA here, and call it just that way. I will show you that on the other slide. This is exactly what I said, yeah? We have X and Y, what we uh, have found in the system app, um, system map file, and we just call it here from the kernel code uh, this is the code which is in exploit text normally, but it would be called from the kernel using this wrapper. This wrapper just only uh, sets to uh, register 
the address of kernel code and jumps there. Okay, so if I load this to the address where the kernel jumps, I can run this code. Yeah, because I fill, if I fill this all with no operation instructions and put there at the end this small code, which calls this one, so kernel will jump somewhere in the middle, then skip all the knobs, then we'll jump here, commit the credentials and return, and we are done. Yeah, do, do you follow here? Or should I repeat that somehow? I, that's not problem of linking because as I said, you have two global variables and you put here just an address of the functions because you know where the uh, function is in the memory. It is a pointer. Yeah, it would be it would be doable, perhaps. Yes, I haven't f thought about that that way. Yeah. I mean, you can also just synthesize the two points in the assembler code. Sorry. You could also just synthesize or just write the assembler code for the function call. Uh, but perhaps they call some other functions in the kernel. They are not well. So w what do I do here is that I find addresses of, of those functions and just call it. And call it in that way that kernel just jumps somewhere in the middle of this space, skip all the knobs and calls my code in here. Is it clear now or still? Yeah? And if I'm able to, to do this as I am, I won because this one will give me the root privileges. Uh, it doesn't matter what I return because, well, because, uh, yeah, if we look at the kernel code, it doesn't look at the return address of the dump at all. Because this is the place where the Function, oops, sorry. This is the code. Ah, yeah, yeah, it, it uh, receives, yeah. So, so the function, the whole uh, function should return minus one, which I returned from the kernel code, yeah. It, um, well, but if I return zero, it shouldn't matter. I think it's just a matter of. Uh, yeah, 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 I will return from the system call, but I will run the shell afterwards. Okay, so how do I do this in the code? It is simple. It is just memset the whole space with knobs and just copy this hunk at the end of the space. So exactly, kernel will jump somewhere in the middle and skip to the end, which is this, which calls this, and I'm root from that moment. So after I actually send the message here, I should be a root. So the only remaining thing to do is to just find out if I'm really root, if the exploit worked, and run a shell. So Yeah, this is exactly what the, what was on the slides. First, there is this hunk and the edit running shell. So if I compile it and run it, I have a root shell. How is that called? Or
Okay. And there is a question why I chose 120. It's, uh, it's because we want to dereference a specific memory behind the array. Oops. Yeah, the array is, is in here, and behind there, there is some memory. In this specific case, if we use uh, 120, we will dereference another table, which is behind it, and the table at that address contains exactly this number. If you are familiar with the kernel and uh, know how GFIs are initialized, this is exactly GFIs. So, uh, and it is updated with every Netlink, messages, Netlink message. So whenever we send a Netlink message, as we did, this value is updated to current GFIs, and uh, this is the reason why we jump there and can rely on that, on that value. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that so that we. Yeah, you can map map the address. Can uh, put there some code you want to execute, and I if you are able, if you are able. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You are allowed. Uh, this is exactly what we are doing. Yeah. Yeah, but the limitation, well, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's years actually, I think. And, and you still can extend the MMAP size or move it somewhere else, and you will still be able to exploit uh, the bug. Okay, so that's just it. Well, as, as, as you could see, uh, writing an exploit could be easy sometimes because uh, there was, well, how many lines it was? It's just a matter of 60, 65 lines and it is 100% uh, 100, 100 reliable and really fast. And this was impressive when I saw it first time. So when you are writing some kernel code, be aware that there can be such uh, easy way to exploit your code. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? Yeah. Do you have other databases called Proxy to exploit DB as a collection of ready-made exploits? Mm -hmm. So just use these. Uh, most of the time, they do not work anymore. Some some of them are only for 32 bits architectures. Some of them are limited by time. So they are not fitting our requirements because until I find something which, which fits, it uh, last, lasted a very long time, because some exploits are uh, applicable. Well, you start applying the exploit, and it uh, lasts, well, three or five minutes before you have a root shell. This one was really one which, uh, where you have the root shell immediately. Yeah, yeah, the K-graft, the K-graft, yeah, yeah, exactly. What the K-graft patch uh, does is that it replaces the old function with the new function. And that was just the fix. It's easy to follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, separately. I can show you actually how the K-graft patch works if I take some
There is also a kernel vulnerable to this bug in this build service project. And there is the kernel, there is the exploit, which I was talking about, and there is also a KGraph patch. And if it worked, I, I would show you how it looks, what it looks like. Yeah. Oh. Oh, come on. It's not the it's not the fastest one. one. Uh, because the function was in line, we had to put there both of the functions, the caller at, at the function, and as you can see, the function contains the the fixed code, and the whole page is just the inline function, the original function, descriptor of the page and some initialization and patching. That's everything what, what KVGraph needs to patch the function. So it is really simple. Bug? Uh, what do you mean? The button, aha, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, the kill sims lookup name are there because from the module you cannot access these. Uh, yeah, that's the global array, so I have to find the address of the array which I'm using there because it's not exported to modules, right? And I use it here instead of, yeah, the same for the mutex and this should be some function which is not exported to. Sorry, we. Yeah, address. Yeah, it. it, it no, it can be also in modules. Yeah, because it's linked in and KL Sims has a uh, hook for loaded modules and it adds that to the database. It's actually used from print case, for example, if you use uh, mm, percent PF. Well, if you find a, a bug in the proper karma and you're encountering k address space when address space stay on section, so you don't know exactly where your karma was loaded. Your karma may be loaded somewhere different. Yeah. That, that relies on the, the karma, karma proper code without modules. Get the stack and just do some arithmetics. That's all the function. Uh, I don't know. I cannot imagine it <laughs> at the moment. Okay. Any other question? Yeah. Yeah, actually, new processors has so-called SMEP, if I remember correctly, and it doesn't allow to jump to addresses in user space from kernel space. It this it results in a page fault. So, yeah, yeah.
is it is it new it is new perhaps maybe i have it in this processor but uh, it's not in the virtual machine i was showing it on for example but that means nothing uh, i will make the fonts larger So it wouldn't work on my machine unless I used no SMAP as a kernel parameter. Okay, other questions, comments? Okay, so thank you for your attention.